Hi, welcome to Dr. Pat TV. Uh, we're looking at the second part, part two of our average rate of change section. Uh, let's just start off uh, examining average rate of change, looking at a nice uh, real example here. I'm looking at the graph uh, from Gallup polls of the uh, investor optimism. So they're looking at people who invest in the stock market and they're kind of doing a little survey of how optimistic they are on um, you know how good the stock market is for them investing. I have three questions that we'll be looking at and so take a moment right chat those down and we'll come back in a second to um, answer these questions. Okay, for our first question, we're looking at what is the average rate of change between December 2007 and February 2009? So we're looking at average rate of change uh, to a math geek, basically from a graph, that's telling me the slope. So what I'm really looking for graphically is the slope between the two data points. The data points I have are December 2007 here, and then we go all the way to February 2009. So there's our two data points. Uh, Thinking wise, I imagine connecting those two data points with the line. That's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at us the slope of this tangent line, or I mean not the tangent line, secant line. And so what I do is I just pick my uh, data points and I calculate in my regular slope formula. For this example, what I've done is I've called uh, December 2007 times zero. And so that's why you're seeing on the bottom in the denominator of my fraction, you're seeing 14 minus zero. That's because I've got December 2007 as times zero. And then that would make February 2009 14 months away. Uh, and so that's where you get in the 14. And so the answer to this question here, what's the average rate of change? It's negative 3.6 um, investor optimism, optimism points per month. That's how it's going down because it's a negative. We have a negative slope because our graph's decreasing. For the second question, what is the average rate of change for a four-month period after December or February 2008? Uh, in this case, the wording of the question is different than the previous one. In this one, we have the starting point, uh, February 2008, but this time we have the interval. We have a four-month period of time. So what I need to do is find the data point here at February 2008 and then go uh, four month period and that'll take me to June 2008. So I'm really looking for the slope of the this, this secant line here between these two data points. Uh, keeping consistent with 2007, December of 2007 as my time zero, this would make uh, time two, month two, and then June would be time six and that's where you're seeing my six minus two. Now because I knew that it was a four month period, I really didn't have to do six minus two because I could have just uh, had uh, put down the four in my denominator because I knew it was a four month period. So there is a shortcut that you can in your calculations when you know these interval size. I could have just automatically went four in the denominator. And in this case, we have a decreasing line. It's decreasing. So our slope here is a negative three right there and um, it's points per month again so it, uh, uh, investor optimism is going down decreasing our third question is which two month time period have the worst rate of change what I'm looking here now is still slope because we're looking at rate of change I'm looking for worst I have to kind of interpret that into the context worst is basically a declining uh, investor optimism so I'm looking for a two month period that had this uh, the sharpest decline I'm looking for a two month period on this graph where the slope is the most negative and for that time period I'm looking between February 2008 and April 2008 because that's where on this graph two month period I've got my data points the steepest decline you may look over here at the very far right of the graph. This section of the line is actually technically steeper than the section that I've highlighted over here. But the problem here is the question was asking for a two month time period. This period right here is only a one month pe period. So therefore it's not uh, valid for my question. So that's why I had to go back all the way over here to February to April. And that's the steepest two month period of time. 
Okay, so uh, just kind of playing around with our average rates of change. I'm going back to that example that I showed in part one where the students are falling asleep in this professor's class. And basically in the previous parts, I've been always arguing how could the professor show or defend themselves. And now what I want to do is take the other perspective of how could the students convince the dean that things are not great. And rather than using the overall rate of change that we talked about last time, last part, I want to look at uh, more of seeking lines 10 minute intervals so what I'm doing here is giving you the slopes kind of these secant lines for 10 minute sections and when I'm looking at that we can see that for the five 10 minute periods that we have four of those have increasing have positive slopes so that's indicating that uh, people are falling asleep. It was only the last 10 minute period of time when we have a decreasing uh, slope, we have a negative slope. And so basically what we're looking at here is four out of the five periods of times have a positive slope and that should give enough evidence there. If we're looking at rates of change, that should provide enough evidence for the dean to say, ooh, something is happening in that class. Okay, so one of the key points that we want to talk about when we look at, at interval uh, or rates of change is that the interval size matters. Um, whether you're doing it over a 10 minute period, a five minute period, or overall period of time from time zero to the end points kind of thing, um, the size of the interval matters because we start losing uh, information. Um, basically, the fluctuations get washed out. As an example, I have a trend line shown here going through the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It bounces all around all the time in that red line showing you bouncing up and down. It's really fluctuating like crazy. And what happens with the trend line there just kind of smooth things out. When you smooth things out, you lose some information. So I want to bring that to your attention that average rates of change are great. They're a great way to analyze things, but they're not perfect. They can be uh, misused, so be careful with your money when you're talking to your investor. Okay, so this finishes part two of average rates of change.